Acts chapter 15. A certain man which came down from Judea, from Israel, taught the brethren, said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now this was under the law. Now this circumcision was given to Abraham and his children after him, Isaac, Jacob, then the twelve tribes. We're under the law. But we've seen already we're moving away from the law. We're moving to grace. We're removing because Jesus has already obeyed the law 100%. So as we step into chapter 15, if you know anybody, well, you know, we obey the law, the law is the salvation. 15 will shoot that down. They're telling the Gentiles, hey, you got to have that operation to be a Jew. That's what they're telling them. And that's what the law said. And if so far as if no man was circumcised of Abraham, they'd be cast out. It's what the Bible says. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small decision, that is a disagreement and dispute, disputation, argument, debating with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. All right. The law says this, correct. We got to have a meeting. We've got to get together with those apostles. We've got to get together with God, the Holy Spirit. We've got to find out what are we to do. Yes, the law says circumcision. But we're not under the law. And being brought on their way by the church, church funded it, took care of them, helped them. They passed through Phoenice, Phoenice however, and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they cause great joy unto all the brethren. Hey, they're getting saved. There's no more boundary between Jew and Gentile. They're getting saved. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all the things that God had done with them. Right? So they come back to Jerusalem. They told them everything on their missionary trip. This is what happened. This is the results. I was stoned. The Jews are causing trouble. They're getting the Gentiles to raise trouble. They're getting the women to go after us. We're getting the gospel out, but it's it's persecution. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believes. Now, this is Paul's sect. These are the ones that Paul grew up with. That it is needful to circumcise them. And to command them to keep the law of Moses. The Pharisees stand up and say, I don't think it's an argument here. I don't think it, it's a question. That not, that, you know, we're God's people. Yes. The Gentiles are God's people. Yeah. Well, the law says they got to be circumcised. And I think it, it, it's a concern here. You know, obey the law and they're not really us until they receive that circumcision. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. So they get together. They pray over it. They fast over it. we got a serious situation. This is not a business meeting. This is not a board meeting. This is a meeting of scripture. There's maybe only a couple books written now of the New Testament. Matthew and maybe James. Acts is not finished. Never mind Paul's writings yet. That hasn't happened. We've got an issue here that's not written. What is written says that they're to go get circumcised. But we are in a... The apostles are now... Paul is now saying, we are in a different dispensation here. I know what the law says, but... We're not under the law. That's what's being said. Get that. Know that. Mark that. Because if we are under the law in the church, if the law was proper, these these apostles, these elders, Paul and Barnabas would say, all right, go ahead, get them circumcised if we're under the law. To be the children of Abraham, you need to be circumcised if 
we're under the law. Paul would have said, all right, Paul, a Pharisee. Pharisee of the Pharisees, of the strictest sect, was Paul. And he says, you know what? we got to talk about this. Something's wrong here. It's right and it's wrong. And we can't study and show ourselves approved under God because I didn't write that yet. <laughs> right? And I can't study ourselves to be approved under God and workmen right. I blew it over. We can't study and show ourselves approved under God a workman that needs to rightly divide the word of truth. I blew that verse. There is no division. There is no word to study right now. The only thing they got is the law. And we're not under law. Jesus said the law was fulfilled to, to John the Baptist. So Paul in his own word, the apostles in their own thought, the elders with their own committee here, their own meeting, the church with meeting together saying, hey, we're not under the law. And when there had been much disputing, look at that. They're arguing. They're fighting. There are words being said. Here is a, your typical Baptist meeting. Yeah, obey the law. No, we don't all obey the law. Get them circumcised. No, don't circumcise. Get law. No, we're not. Law, no law. Law, no law. Knock it off. Law, no. Shut up, Paul. You no longer want to. You shut up. I have the witness of Jesus Christ. Paul, shut up. No, you shut up. No, you did. We did it. No, shut up. Peter rose up. Imagine Peter's going to set them straight and said unto them, Men and brethren, this is how they began with the Jews in Acts chapter 2. What a switch now we're going to see with Peter. You want me to go over to their house? They're unclean. Don't you call them unclean. Don't you call them. They're common now. All right. Men and brethren. Now you see, there are people at that meeting right now, they're lost, and there are people in that meeting that are saved. You see what happens when you get unsaved and saved people together in the church? There's disputing. We don't have rock music. No, we don't need rock music. I like this Bible. I like this Bible. Shut up! Get the saved people together. Get the unsaved out. And let's serve God properly. You know how the great while ago God made choice among us. That the Gentiles by my mouth, Acts chapter 10, should hear the word of the gospel. Look what Peter just said. I went to them with the gospel and believed. That's Cornelius and his family and the group. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. They got saved. Even as he did unto us, Jews. And put no difference between us and them. Jews and Gentiles, purifying their hearts by faith. See that word faith? Throw the law out, Peter just said. Peter, oh Lord, I've not put anything unclean to my mouth. Here's the <coughs> by faith now. Peter's come a long way since the water dogs in Acts 2.38. Peter has changed within 14. 13 verse chapters. When Peter saw that vision, that was saying, hey, listen, there's no more between Jews and Gentiles. They're common. They need to be saved. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God? Ooh. This is Peter speaking to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples. These are people who have disciplined their lives for Jesus Christ. Why are you putting a yoke upon them? Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Jesus said, take my yoke. You guys are doing what the... This is what Peter's saying. You're doing what those Pharisees are saying. Wash your hands before you eat. You can only go so far on the Sabbath day. Why'd you do that in the Sabbath day? You can't give this coin. You gotta exchange it for this coin. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. And... Peter says, you guys are putting a yoke. As far as us believers, 
Now, take that yoke off them. There's no room for yokes here. We are by faith. He put a neck upon the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear the law. We couldn't handle the law, guys. See those Pharisees over there? They made their own rules. Jesus even said, their tradition, their leaven. Never mind what God said. They have added to it. And you know what we're doing right now in chapter 15? We are adding just like the Pharisees. We're being Phariseeism. We're going to add something else to what does not need to be added to for salvation. We need to knock it off. Mighty strong words from Peter. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they, the, the Gentiles. There's no law. and We're not in the law. We're not doing circumcision. We're not doing this. And so are they. The Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost came on to Cornelius. Peter did not perform no operations at all. For the male children. You find Ishmael today in his religion doing circumcision. That's putting you back under the law. And this is the debate here. Circumcision for a religious right. It's what we're debating. Now, listen, if you want to do circumcision for it's cleanliness, it, it, it's proper and healthy, then uncircumcision for the health, okay. It's a choice, yes or no. But to say we're going to have circumcision our child because the Bible, you are stepping out of the realm of Acts 15 and going back into the law. And it's not allowed. This is the big fight. From now to 2016, as long as the Lord tarry, you got a baby boy. Do I circumcise him because the Bible says so? No, you don't. Because we're not under the law. We're under grace. You circumcise your child eight days, whatever, how many days? That child lives to be 50. That child lives to be 70. It lives to be 12. It lives whatever age that child lives. Circumcision, according to what the Bible says, and dies without Christ, he'll be burning in hell, not having his foreskin. Now, if the doctors talk to you and said the healthy reasons, this is the plus, minus the cons of circumcision and non-circumcision, you say, you know what, just for health standards, and just, we'll do it. Okay, that's fine. You're thinking of the health of your child. But you're not forced to do it because God said circumcise your child. No. Go back to circumcision. It's always related to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And yes, it was referenced to Gentiles. Abraham's servants. Anyone that was born in Abraham's house had to be circumcised. Here's the debate, circumcision. Of all debates to bring to the church meeting, do you realize what they're talking about here? Can I be clean? You know what member of the body they're talking about at this meeting they are fighting about? Can you imagine when Joshua was the children of Israel, they're all growing up, he says, before we go into the promised land, we've got to have an operation. <laughs> you imagine uh, what was... Dinah's uh, brothers there told that city, that Gentile city, you must be circumcised to be part of us. That was all trickery. Now you tell me those all those people that got circumcised there because they loved Dinah. You think they're gonna you think they ended up in heaven because they were circumcised? Absolutely not. So here's the big thing in the church. Imagine bringing this up in a church meeting. But you know what? It's perfectly proper because it's in the law. And put verse 9 and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear any religion that puts any kind of yoke upon its people in the name of God you are tempting God and you're putting a yoke they can't bear but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they, amen, Peter. What's the Pope say about his people in circumcision? you got to have it done. Bad Pope. Bad Peter Pope. Bad Paul Pope. 
you know, some of the books are called Pope, Pope John Paul, whatever. These popes are not following the church. That's because the popes are not in the Bible. These are men of God. These are disciples. These are apostles of God. Then all the multitude kept silence. <laughs> Peter shut them right up. And gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles. Peter stood up about circumcision. He spoke. He said, don't put a yoke up on him. And the silence over the meeting said, now what conducted it with this meeting? Paul, how did the missionary trip go? What was the result of the circumcision? Okay, we're not going to do it no more. We're not going to put that burden on people. It's done. It's finished. That law is gone. How's that? Paul, can you tell us what happened in your trip? Barnabas, can you speak a whole words about uh, your trip? And gave audience to Bar the Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Now there's still miracles and wonders. There's still no word of God yet. There's still Jews hanging out because who's persecuting? Who stoned Paul in the last chapter? Jews. We'll see by the end of the book. We'll see what Paul is miracles. And the thing with miracles, with signs and wonders, let me ask you a question. If the signs and wonders were great, even amongst the Jews, how come no one ever walked to James, who was killed by a sword, and said, Be healed in the name of Jesus, and James got up? You know James is still in the grave now? I guess the signs are going, aren't they? They couldn't heal James. What about Stephen? Anybody ever tried to lay hands on Stephen? No, they said they buried him. Wait a minute, buried him? Lay hands on him. Heal the dead, heal the sick, raise up the dead. Did that happen with Stephen? Absolutely not. We got two deaths recorded in the Bible right now, nothing to be said about them. And we're going to move away from these signs and wonders. Because the Bible, like I said, nothing right now. But I will show you approximately dates when the, when the epistles and the books were written. They gave, the multitude kept silence, gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James, now this would be James, the brother of the Lord, not John's brother, James. There was two James. James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, who rejected Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, got saved afterwards. As far as we know, Mary and James are only two of his family that got saved. So don't give me a cotton bull story that your entire family saved. Jesus' own family only had two people saved. Maybe more. But how many brothers and sisters was listed? We don't know what happened to Joseph. He had aunts and uncles where he was left at 13 years old. They went among the aunts. Hey, have you seen Jesus? No, I haven't seen Jesus. It's his kinsfolk. James answered, said, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. All right, listen to me. Simeon has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. That's Peter. That's an interesting thing because the Pope will say, the, the apostles always dress Peter by Peter. James stood up and said, Simeon just gave us a story. Sorry. He didn't say Peter. He said Simeon. Or Simon. At first did visit the Gentiles, Acts chapter 10, to take out of them a people for his name. Cornelius and his family were taken out for the name of God. They got saved. And to this agreed the words of the prophets as is written. As after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle. Now see the prophet? Where we saw prophets? Here's prophecy. Listen, Jesus fulfilled all the first advent prophecies. That ain't it. He's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. He's been since Acts chapter 1. There are still more prophecies. 
if he fulfilled all the first ad Advent prophecy, what do you think he's going to do with all the second Advent prophecy? He's going to fulfill and build again the tabernacle of David. That's interesting because there was no temple of David. David built him a bunch of curtains and David one day said, man, Lord, why are you living like that? You realize in the heart of David, God saw more than just curtains. And in the heart of Solomon, he saw, you built your house better than you built my house. Yeah, David committed the two grossest sins that could be ever committed, but the Lord loved him because his heart was right. The tabernacle of David, which is falling down, where is it? It's gone. That temple that they're looking at right now was not built by David or Solomon. David laid up a whole bunch of gold, a whole bunch of everything. It's not in that building. That building was built by the Romans. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will... This is about 52 AD. Do you realize what James has said? Turn around, boys. It ain't ruined. What's he talking about? Look how beautiful the place is. James just prophesied after 70 AD when that place is destroyed. Remember, Jesus preached. Jesus said this place is going to be compassed with armies. It's going to be destroyed. When the disciples say, hey, you see how beautiful this place is? James has jumped over. 70 AD. 18 years later, this will happen. The ruins, they're up. I will set it up. It hasn't been set up yet, but it will. It will. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord and the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Amen. That the residue of men, the remnant of the Jews, might seek after the Lord. The second advent, when the Jews following, there he is. There is the Messiah, no shadow of a doubt. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called? James has spoke of the second advent of the church coming after Jesus Christ in the second advent. You just see in verse 16, 70 AD, destruction. Verse 17, here comes the Lord Jesus Christ on horseback with us behind him to gather the raiment. Joel chapter 2. Remember, that's the same message that Peter preached. Look at that. Look at that. There we are. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence, my decree, a judge makes a sentence, is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Okay, this fornic, uh, this this circumcision, stop it. This law, stop it. Now you remember where Jesus said to the disciples, He says, "What sins you will remit, I will remit, and what sins you keep, I'm okay. I'm not calling that verse." You remember when He said that? And the Catholic Church states that if you go into the little Catholic booth there, into the closet, you tell him your sins and whatever sins are remit, blah, 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 blah. That's not them. That's the, that's the apostles meeting right now with no Bible finished saying, hey, circumcision is not a sin. Uncircumcision is not a sin. Now we're going to talk about some sins here. These are sins. Circumcision, not a sin. You know what God wrote down for us? All right, James and Peter, and they agreed at the council. Circumcision, don't worry about it. Okay. For people who are saved, who have not had circumcision, it's not a sin. Don't go down to the doctor. It's, it's not pertaining. If it is, we have 1 John 1, 9 today. Confess the sins and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, and he'll be forgiven you. And still, you won't be commanded to go do the operation. And... But that we write unto them. Oh, oh, look at writing. Writing. What's writing? Acts 15, verse 19 to 27. See, Paul couldn't take off right now and say, okay, here's Acts, here's Acts 15, 19. No, wait, wait a minute. 
we, hold on, guys. What? I gotta go back to Jerusalem. Why? I forgot to bring the I forgot to bring the epistle. James never finished the epistle. I gotta wait for him to finish it to bring it to the people. Understand what I'm saying? Now it's being written. We write unto them, the Gentiles, the Gentiles, the saved men, that they abstain from pollution. That's unclean defilement. But that's not. We abstain from the pollutions of idols, comma. We are told by the council in Acts chapter 7, you got an idol, you sin. American Idol on a church night, instead of being a church, is a sin. Something more important than God is a sin. Republican and Democrat runners that have more attention in your life than Jesus Christ is a sin. Making sure you get your vote over trying to reach a lost soul with the gospel of Jesus Christ is a sin. Acts, seven, Acts, I don't know why I say sin. Acts 15. All right. No circumcision. Don't worry about it. But you better stay from idols. You know where Paul's going next? He's going to a bunch of countries that are full of idols. Remember, he's already been called Mercurius. And Barnabas was called Jupiter. Those are idols. That's idol worship. They're going to run into Diana. They're going to run into all kinds. He's going to go to a, to a, a, a little hill. They've got an unknown God statue. That's an idol. If you're going to get saved, you can't do that no more. Paul's going to speak to the Corinthians. He says, listen, if this hamburger, if you had no idea this hamburger was dedicated to the Corinthian God, go ahead and eat it. But if you sit at that guy's table and he says, I dedicated that, that meat, that food on your plate, I dedicated it to the, to the God of the marketplace, Paul says, you do not eat it. That's where Paul gets this, right here. It's better, hey, don't know. Don't ask. Eat it. Because most of that food was dedicated to an idol. Just don't ask. But if it was maintained to you, don't do it. Where's Paul getting that quote from? He's getting it from James, Acts chapter 15. Paul got this letter and knew what the letter said. Did you know Paul quoted from the book of Acts? Acts 15. Before it was written. Here's the letter. He's going to carry this letter with him. Next. And from fornication. Well, that's a kind of strange subject to talk about after you talk about <laughs> circumcision. James and the church and the elders say no fornication. And from things strangled. You cannot eat meat that the blood has not. That's the only thing in the law that remained. You better make sure all the blood is out of that meat. That is something that happened before the law. God told Noah, you remove all that blood. No eating of blood. The law says no eating of blood. We are in Acts. We are now in the beginning of the church age, which has already started. And it said no and from blood. So, my friend, if you step up to the altar and drink down God's blood, what you say it's Jesus' blood, you have violated the writing of James carried by Paul of Acts 15, right there. The mass defiles the word of God. You can't drink blood. And they will tell you in the catechism, the priest will walk up and tell you, yes, that is the literal blood of Jesus Christ. And say, hey, you're committing a sin. So what about if I'm somewhere and the only thing I could do is drink the blood? What's the Bible say? It's a sin. Now we got 1 John 1, 9 to confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but it's a sin. For Moses... Of old time had in every city them that preached him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day now what he's talking about right here is saying listen 
And every Sabbath, they're reading the law. When they went to Sabbath third service, Moses was taken out and he was read. The law stated, okay, you want the law? Here's the only things you're not to do according to the law. These are the only three things from the law you can keep. No idols, no fornication, and no drinking of blood. How's that for enough of the law? So he's taking things out of the law and other things in the law. No. Washing hands. And all, no, no, that's not important. You keep them from idols. Because, Paul, you're going to an idolatrous nation. The whole world is full of idolatry. You keep them away from that once they get saved. And keep them from fornication and keep them from drinking blood. Those are things out of the law we're going to write. Then, please it the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men to, of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Bar Bar yeah, Barnabas. He wants to say Barabbas. So they're going to send a whole bunch of people with Paul. Namely, Judas, surnamed Barabbas. Barabbas. I'm not going to be called Judas no more. Yeah. That's kind of funny because I know somebody calls himself Judas and proclaims to be a Christian. And I don't care if you hear this. Yeah, I don't think you are. Right. I don't think you are. No, that name. This guy changed his name. Who, who betrayed Jesus? Uh, Peter? Can I talk to you for a minute? Yes, yeah, Judith. No, please. I've got to get my name changed. Why? What's wrong? Just don't want that name. Well, and whoever he talked to, they said, all right, surname, Barasibus. Which would be, that bar is a son of, I think the, the Jewish is bar is son of something. Or Ben. That might be Ben. I don't know. And Silas, ooh, there's Silas, he's going to start coming in the picture. Chief men among the brethren. They send brethren, not lost people. You don't send lost people out to the mission field. Because they'll have shoelace boxes and crayons. And I see today something on Facebook. Give 65 bucks so you can buy a kid a goat. I, I can't. It was on my Facebook today. I'm like, what? What kind of gospel is that? Kid will love a goat. A gift. I'm like, oh my. And they wrote letters. Where have you seen that in Acts? Where have you seen the, the, the disciples, the turn apostles in the gospels writing? Now they're writing. Now start seeing the, the, the signs start going disappearing. What are the letters after this man? Well, we know one of them is verse 19 to 27. That's been preserved for us to know. They wrote letters by them after this manner. What we just spoke about, verse 20. The apostles and the elders and the brethren sent greetings unto the brethren, which are in the which are the Gentiles of Antioch, Syria, and Sicia. What's the message? All right, Gentiles. Got a message from you from the head church. What's that? In the order of James by Jesus Christ, and you disciples of Jesus, you are to abstain from idolatry, you are abstain from fornication, and no more drinking of blood. Circumcision? Don't worry about that, will you? We had a big fight over that. Let's just work on these three right now. Because as far as Europe and Asia goes, those are the big three. Because idolatry and fornication, fornication was the mass form of the Roman government, orgies. Paul's about to go to Rome. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls. So there were people of the church that came out and they were changing the word of God. Nothing new under the sun, is it? The apostles, the disciples, Paul, Silas, Barnabas, all had the same problems we got. People are going out subverting people. 52 AD. Saying, ye must be circumcised. 
Do you see those people said you need to be circumcised early in this chapter? All right, we debated with them. It's not true. We have talked. We, you guys are just sinners now, and you're perverts. You continue to say do you need to be circumcised? You're a pervert. See that? Subverting. Perverts. I think we used that word before early in the book of Acts. Perverts. And keep the law. Anybody who tells you that to keep the law, as far as Acts 15 now, you're a pervert. You're subverting the souls. How's that? Can it get any clearer than that? Never mind what Paul writes to Galatians. How about that? I am not under the law. Now, being saved, obeying the law would be very proper for me. Obeying my parents, honoring my parents would be great. Keeping my eye off my neighbor's stuff would be great. Not messing with my neighbor's wife would be great. Not stealing anything that, that is anything is not mine. That's great. But that stuff ain't going to save me. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord, early in this chapter, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. See, Paul was beloved. Barnabas was beloved and respected. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. Can you imagine what Paul looks like right now? You think he's, you think all those wounds have healed up on him yet? You think he's got scar tissue after being stoned, thought dead? We have sent there uh, therefore Judas, oh boy, they kept his name, didn't they? And Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. You know what they got? They got the same word. They got the same testimony. Jesus Christ. They have not changed it. There's no change in the Word of God. Wherever these men are going, they're going with the same thing. Gospel, nothing else. They're not bringing no programs. They're not bringing no story. They're not telling, bringing no drama. They're bringing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that's it. What's the church done today? For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden then these necessary things. Here we go. That you stain from the meats offered to idols. For Paul got it. And from blood and from things strangled. And from fornication. Oh, when they discussed it in verse 20, now we read the Holy Spirit was part of it and said, I approve of that. I approve that meeting you boys had together there. And the outcome of it, the Holy Spirit says, signed, sealed, and delivered. Take it and go preach it. Teach those that are saved these things. As far as those that are lost, go out there with the gospel. From which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. You know, if, if, you, leave, if you live this life saved, you're going to do well. You ain't going to go to hell. If you do well, don't do it. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. Knows how much that's coming up. It seems to be the secondary headquarters. It's where our Bible comes from. And when they had, oh, when they had dismissed, they came to Antioch carrying this letter. Look at that. This is the first letter that we push in Antioch that will go into your Bible, Acts 15. There it is. This is the first official writing that rides where our Bible comes from, Antioch. There it is. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. See, there it is. It's in Antioch now. So you could ask yourself, what is the first official New Testament that made to Antioch the root of the Bible? Acts 15. What is it? Don't drink blood. Don't do idolatry. Don't commit fornication. Stain yourself from blood. Signed and sealed by the apostles, by the elders, by the church, with the signification of the Holy Ghost. How's that? 
than Antioch. When they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. They read this epistle before the church. This would be the first official New Testament reading of the Bible to Gentiles. As recorded in the New Testament Bible. Look at that. Put that in your, your American Bible questionnaire. See who know that. When they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. They're, teach they're not bringing the gospel to them. They're already saved. They're teaching them. They're, they're growing them. They're spending time with them. Today, churches get people saved. And they, All right, that's a notch on my belt. Next. You get their phone number? You get a mailing address to that person you got saved so you can send them a Bible, help them find a Bible believing church where they live, help them send them information, write back and forth, correspondence, call each other. You're always, everyone's always on the phone. You on the phone with a person, you, your new convert to Jesus Christ? Are you growing them? Imagine a mother taking a, a, a child and leaving it in a garbage can and taking it off for their own life. Oh, how wicked, how terrible. But how are you with someone who got saved with, with the power of God and you just leave them in the garbage can and walk off and go get someone else? How's that? There's a couple men in prison. I, I can't do much with the men after I leave prison. I found capable men, I believe, who were trustworthy. I said, listen, that guy just got saved tonight. He needs to grow. He's a newborn lamb. There's a bunch of wolves out there. You know, help me know what to do. I've had people who, who got saved on me. And I, I took the Bible and grew. And then they came to the point they stopped growing. They didn't want to grow any further. Okay, fine. I've done what I could. Well, I hear people say, this guy got saved. Did you get their phone number? Did you get their address? I got their name. And after they had tarried there a space and stayed there a little while, they were let go in the peace from the brethren unto the apostles. I guarantee they didn't leave until they were ready to leave. When that newborn babe in Christ could start walking and talking, and feeding himself and can go poo poo by himself and dress himself all right young man now i think you're ready to go on your own we're going to leave you a capable preacher here i think i've done all i can do for you right now that's what paul did to timothy and paul had a great 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 help from a mother and a grandmother that, that pre-brought timothy up Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to buy their stay. So I was like, I'm not ready to let them go yet. Can I stay a little longer with them? But Silas, we got to go get all these people Say We got to have all. No, no, no. I'm going to stay here a little bit and help these guys out a little longer. Can I? And you know Paul's going to approve of that because Paul's going to have an attitude here in a minute. Silas wants to stay. John Mark wanted to leave. Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So the, the word of the Lord. No skits, no 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 vacation Bible, no bounce houses, no they're preaching and teaching the word of the Lord. Preaching to those that are lost and teaching those who are saved. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas. Let us go again and visit our brethren, say people, in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. So Paul's like, let's go check on them. Let's go see how they're doing. Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. Now watch this. Paul thought no good to take him with him. Who departed from them in Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Chapter 13, verse 13. Remember he left? Paul said, I ain't taking that brat. I ain't taking him. That guy left us. Watch. Watch Paul here. 
and the contention, the argument, the debate, the debating, the, the, the fierceness was so sharp between them. There is a fight, an argument of words because somebody wanted to take a guy who went home to mama or whatever he did. We don't know what he did. John Mark left in 1313 and Paul is angry with him. Let's take him. Absolutely not. They departed asunder, one from the other. So this breaks Barnabas and Paul. John Mark breaks the two. Barnabas is one that bought Saul and said, Hey guys, he's saved. What are you worried about? So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyphus. Paul chose Silas. Silas wanted to stay. Silas like, you guys go. I want to stay here a little while. Silas... I can assume wanted to do good in his state, and John Mark did not want to do good when he left. So Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God, after they just had this big fight, and he went through Syria and Sicilia, Syria. That's where the problem is right now in the world, with the refugees. The civil wars and Sicily are confirming the church what are they doing you guys better be doing right you better be living right you better be doing what you're supposed to be doing don't you Paul would walk up to you don't you dare call yourself a Christian after what you're doing you get your butt out of this church right now shacking up with, with, with your fathers get out of here I turn you over to Satan that's how hard Paul was He's making sure those churches are doing right. And if they're not doing right, he's going to stay there. And he's going to get them right. And he's going to kick out those who are not doing right. He's making sure they're growing right in the Lord. That's what he's doing. 